came to America when you were eight years old, right? So walk me through that. What was, what were your, some of your early, um, earliest memories of American culture and cuisine that sort of inspired who you are today? You know, honestly, coming from an Italian family, they kept us very insulated for right. a long time in the sense of, you know, we didn't really eat American food. We sort of we had to speak Italian when we were at home all the time, which mm -hmm. I flunked first grade because of it, oh, because no. I couldn't pick up the language fast enough, because my parents would, you know, make me speak English, uh, yeah. speak Italian all the time, other right. than when I was in school. So I think my earliest memories would be when we moved to Los Angeles. So we moved to the States when I was eight, when we moved to New York. Mm -hmm. I lived there for a couple of years. Then we moved to Los Angeles. Oh, so it wasn't directly to Los Angeles? No, so. okay. it was not directly to Los Angeles. Okay. Okay. So, you know, in Italy, you follow sort of the patriarch of the family, mm -hmm. and my grandfather was the patriarch, and right. he made movies for a living, so mm -hmm. he had made a deal with Gulf and Western, which was in New York, and that's why we lived there for a while, and then moved to L.A. Oh, and when I got older and I was in L.A., I think I, the first thing I remember mm -hmm. is going to a friend's house and having a TV dinner. <laughs> a TV dinner? Okay. Do, you, do you guys know what TV dinners are? Oh, yeah. Are? I, 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 yeah. Last time I had one is, yeah. Right. So yeah. they were all separate. Mm. And um, you know all the dishes are separate mm. in the in the little tray, mm -hmm. and I just remember thinking to myself, "Is this dog food? Like, what is this exactly?" Mm. And mm. you know, they, I remember my friends, the parents would would heat it up, mm -hmm. and then we would sit in front of the TV and eat it. And right. I thought to myself, Whoa, "This is so different than what I'm used to." Oh my gosh! Yeah, you know, this is so um, culturally different, and the food, of course, it was not my favorite. Oh, sure. I will say that I didn't enjoy it that much, but I will say that the first thing that I truly, truly loved um, that was American are uh, French fries. Mm. You know, so burgers and French fries were probably my very, very first um, thing that I fell in love. With. I'm so excited to try out the local food. Like, like, what's the one place I have to absolutely have to try? Uh, well, what kind of food do you like? Okay. I, like, I, what's your favorite? Because, I mean... Okay, I'm so versatile. I can eat... Um, well, obviously, well, I'm Asian. I've grown up eating a lot of, you know, fusion food and uh, Asian, Korean, Chinese, Japanese. But I love Italian. Do you like Do you like Mexican? Or I love Southwestern Mexican, too. Because oh, yeah, really absolutely. and truly, we probably have some of the best Mexican food. Because mm -hmm. we're so close. Exactly. You right. know? Mm -hmm. So there's this place called Petty Cash um, Tacos that's really yummy. Uh -huh. Super, super cash. Right. There's uh, Border Grill. Border Grill. With Mary Sue Milken. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they make great sort of tex mex -y type of food. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, I mean, one of my favorites is capo, and it's Italian. Capo. Capo. Capo, C-A-P-O. Yeah, like a captain in Italian. It's capo. Oh, got it, got it, got it. And then um, there's great Korean barbecue, too. Oh, love Korean we have, you know. Well, yeah, the Korean population is huge there. So it's huge, yeah. and it's just getting bigger and bigger. Roy Choi is basically the leader of all that. Mm. Do you know who he is? No, I haven't heard of him. Okay, so he has um, mm -hmm. he has Korean barbecue trucks and restaurants. Really? Wow. Yeah. So it's a it's a huge culture right now right. in L.A. for us. So has he incorporated that with like tacos and stuff like that? Does he do? Oh, that's where it came from because it's starting to become a trend here. That's so. where it started. Oh, so it's Roy Choi. It is Roy Choi. Yeah. I know you went to school for, is it social anthropology? Is that what I went you went to UCLA, mm -hmm. yes, I majored mm -hmm. in, in anthropology, yes. Mm -hmm. At what point did you decide, like, because I know you, obviously your interest changed to culinary, and you went to Cordon Bleu? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of realized midway through college that I wanted, actually probably the beginning, mm -hmm. that I wanted to go to culinary school, but my yeah. parents mm -hmm. um, insisted I finish college because right. I was too young to know exactly what I wanted to do, and it was mm -hmm. too... It was too specialized, Got and they felt like if you, in the end, get out of that school and you don't want to cook, mm. then what? So they had me finish college. You have to also remember that in my family, I'm mm. pretty much the first to go to college. Right. Nobody Understood. went to college. And so I did that. Mm -hmm. And then after I was done with college, I said, you know, I still I still really want to move to Paris and go to school. I really wanted to be a, um, originally when I went to culinary school, I wanted to be a pastry chef. That was sort of my thing. I loved desserts, and so I thought that would be super, super fun. And mm -hmm. what better place to go learn how to make pastries than in Paris? Oh, okay, absolutely. So that was my initial thought. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, I studied everything, obviously, mm -hmm. and when I came back to the States, mm -hmm. I couldn't really get a pastry job anywhere. Yeah, obviously. It wasn't what it is today where you have oh. cupcake places and all these pastry chefs that are famous. It wasn't like that. Um, mm -hmm. And by the way, nobody in L.A. even ate pastries. Yeah, because I've been so health conscious. Right. right yeah. So it was a, it was rough. So mm -hmm. I um I started working for Wolfgang Puck. 
Yes, oh my God, amazing. I did that and I worked for him and then I was able to move over to work for Sherry Yard who was this pastry chef. Right. And that's sort of where I, where I honed my skills. Um, after that, I started private chefing to actually make some money because my family was over it. They were tired of supporting me. <laughs> and Ron Howard it was my first uh, my first private chefing job where I cooked for him and his family while he was making oh movies. My goodness. And I would travel to Connecticut and I would travel to LA and I'd go back and forth with his family and I'd cook for everybody. And then little by little, I built my, I built my business on that. Yeah. And um, I started to feel like I needed something a little more creative. Mm. So I um, started doing a little food styling with a friend of mine who was a food stylist. <laughs> and uh, Food & Wine Magazine basically asked me to do a piece on my family and our food. Um, right. And this was right after 9-11. Uh. And so I did that. And from there, Food Network saw it. And from there, every day Italian was born. And it was just sort of a... And I know it's a lot of your recipes, there's a bit of sweetness, like I mentioned earlier, the, the pork medallions with the, the caramelized marmalade, right? Or even the, the lavender lemon cookies, oh, genius. Like, I think you had a sweet basil smoothie too, like, a lot of sweet I, I like a little bit of sweetness. Oh, I me mean, too. Yeah. It, it's sort of part of my signature. Mm -hmm. That and citrus are the two things yes. that are my favorites. Uh, it, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, it's one of those things, I add a lot of agave these days to different things. Mm -hmm. to, kind of sweeten them up just a tiny bit. Yeah, because I know you like honey a lot. You do love the honey. It's got that... It's a rich floral sweetness. Yes. You know, that mm -hmm. sugar, just plain sugar doesn't bring to the table. What are your favorite sweets? Like, I know you're a chocoholic. I'm a chocoholic. Mm -hmm. So, in my new cookbook, I have this, um, these chocolate fig bites. Mm -hmm. So I take um, dried figs. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it with dates. I'm just not a huge date fan. Mm -hmm. Dried figs, a little bit of almond, um, almond butter. Ooh. To kind of give it a little stickiness and a yeah. little salty sort of bite to it. Yeah, yeah. Mix it together um, and make little balls and I dip it in dark chocolate. They're like oh little bonbons, God. although they're gluten free. <laughs> so good. And they can be vegan if you make them yeah. with chocolate, you know, with chocolate that has no dairy in it. But exactly. they are one of my favorite little treats right now. Oh they're God. soft and chewy on the inside, mm -hmm. but yet nutty and sweet. And then they have this chocolate crust on the outside mm -hmm. with a little sea salt. And oh, it's just that sounds phenomenal. Brilliant. And I give them as gifts too because they're just that good. Oh. To look at it. So it's in your latest cookbook. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite yeah. little treats right now. Because you know, mm -hmm. I think everybody keeps asking me for gluten free and vegan and this and that, and I get it. Like I get it. Kids are sick and people don't feel good and they need to be mm -hmm. eating better. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been really fun to sort of um, change things up mm -hmm. and try to find ways to make really great yeah. treats right. that maybe help a lot of people feel better. You know? Mm -hmm. No, no, for sure. It's it's brilliant. It's conscious and it's yeah. It's it's where we are today as a society. Um, Like I know you're a pop culture fan. I know um, you you like Lady Gaga, right? I do. What other like musicians like uh, the fun side of uh, Jada that we don't know about that we that we don't see? Like in terms of like you know celebrities, are are you fans of um, any particular actors, singers? That, uh, uh, let's see. I it's you know what's funny is mm -hmm. that the other day. Um, mm -hmm. Thursday night I did the Red Dress event, um, mm -hmm. the runway show. Yes, I heard it was your first time modeling. It was my oh, first congrats. time ever. That's amazing. And um, yeah. it was super fun because mm -hmm. my husband and I have been such big fans of Lindsay Vaughn for so long. My husband oh. was a huge skier and, um, and really? a junior Olympic skier until he that. hurt his knee mm. and couldn't do it anymore. And so mm -hmm. she was there and we did it together and uh, you know she really messed her knee up, which is why she's not at the Olympics. And that was a super fun moment to be able to do that. Oh. And then the next morning on the Today Show, we cooked her banana bread together, which was super fun. So oh. it was fun to be able to to do that. Um, I think, you know, it's been fun to sort of meet different, I mean, celebrities, it's funny because I, mm -hmm. I grew up in, in Hollywood and so mm -hmm. celebrities were never a big deal to right, me. Right, exactly. You know, um, I like out of the box type of people mm -hmm. and I like people who are real um, and they don't, you know, they don't always have to be big movie stars. True. You know, and I, I think that, um, and when it comes to music, I like a lot of different music. Like, I love the new song that um, Katy Perry and John Mayer did together. Oh, that who you love? Yes. Yeah, so beautiful. love that song. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, you know, it's funny. I just went to um, the Red Hot Chili Peppers in New York the oh weekend my on the weekend of Super Bowl. Yeah. To watch them. But then again, I've also been to Madison Square Garden and watched Billy Joel. Yeah, very clucked. You know, yeah. I think it's it sort of depends on the mood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The mood that I'm in depends, mm -hmm. and, and then that's kind of what drives me, mm -hmm. you know? I think MGMT, I, I love. Oh, what else wow. do we listen to, Julie? Oh, um, who else have we been listening to? Julie travels with me all the time. Oh, yeah. 
new new artists are like shit to play with Mac or uh, who sings Harlem? I love that song. Uh, I forget uh, that song. Lord, do you like Lord? I do like Lord. Yeah, Lord's great. Harlem. Yeah, the remember. song is Harlem, but I can't okay, remember the I'll band. Google that up. You know, that's, a, you know, that's the thing with kids that grow up in this day and age. They're very, you know, it's very secularized. Like, it's very, you know, it's very um, polarizing music, right? You have one thing that you listen to. But when we grew up in the 80s, it's sort of one of those things that's like, we listen to everything. Yeah, because I always feel like music is like food. It depends on what mood you're in. Like, yeah. so, there's days that I want comfort food, and there's days I just don't exactly. want that. Like or there's, it's, it's sort of like, it depends on mm. how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. And agree. that sort of drives... And I, and I think analogy. I think that when we were younger too, we were too afraid mm. to really tell you like like that we might like something our parents liked. Exactly. I know. And when I was a kid, a lot of Julio Iglesias was in my house <laughs> and Gypsy Kings, That's and awesome. so but I never wanted to say I liked it. But now as I'm older, I'm like, well, I actually do like it because it kind of yeah. brings me back to those days. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's kind of an eclectic mix, you know. I like the traditional stuff. Um, but I also like the new stuff. There's some really fun new bands yeah, yeah. coming out that are that are super cool. Oh, I have to look up. The you know, I love Dave Grohl. I mean, I like I like all of the Foo Fighters. That's, all of them. You know, so it's it's kind of fun. A lot of my readers are young people like me. Like you know, we don't have much time to cook. Like, what is yeah. it? I noticed you did something brilliant um, on one episode. So was it was at uh, Jet at Home. You use wonton wrappers to make ravioli. To make ravioli, and it was like brilliant. I'm like, I never would have thought of that. You know, to think of you know something so Chinese as pasta. Well, I think that um, people just don't have time to make fresh pasta. That's they what just it don't, is. and mm-hmm. it's hard to find a, you know ravioli sheets that you can just kind of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm you can just buy it for a lot of people and sometimes it's too hard and gummy and I think they, it's hard to control the, the uh, texture oh, absolutely. even when they do buy it mm. um, and what I love about wontons is that they're so super light and they cook mm. so quickly and it's almost like the package and really it's about the filling and not mm-hmm. about the package because it just melts away and so um, I wanna, I've, I've always wanted to find ways to inspire people to get in the kitchen mm-hmm. and make Italian food that still looks and tastes fantastic but there's a few tricks to make it a lot easier for yourself and for me that on Valentine's Day mm-hmm. is like the best treat ever exactly you can focus on other things with your time which is yeah, yeah. Not... I mean I think you can um, mm. there's a time and a place mm. for making um, you know bolognese and all of these things that take a little bit longer mm. but there should also be a time and a place to be able to, to carve out 15 minutes to make yourself a meal mm-hmm. that way we can learn how to cook for ourselves and make it fun yeah, okay. you know mm-hmm. um, and not intimidating mm-hmm. What's your what's your uh, favorite like quick fix for a go to meal to make to make for yourself? Well, for breakfast it would be my oatmeal with olive oil and salt. Really, that's number one. Savory oatmeal. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, why sh- why does it have to be sweet? You're right. No, it's sure. it's just like pasta and rice. It yeah. really doesn't have any flavor until you mm-hmm. add it. Mm-hmm. So I add a little bit of salt um, to the water that I cook it in, mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. you could do an almond milk if you wanted unsweetened almond, almond milk to make it creamier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I finished it off with um, a little bit of olive oil, a little mm-hmm. bit of salt and pepper. Like oh. I was going to eat rice or anything else. Oh, so it's a savory way mm-hmm. to start your day because mm-hmm. if you start it with sugar, you yeah. just crash. Oh, totally. Constant. Oh, yeah. So um, I love that, especially on the road because it's on the road. It's really hard to find things that are healthy to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I always I order all, um, oatmeal made in with, with water, and I mm-hmm. just add I just ask for a little side of olive oil, which everybody mm-hmm. now has. Got that, yeah. Salt and pepper, and I make my own breakfast, and mm-hmm. it's just so easy and a great go-to. Um, my chia seed pudding is actually, it's funny because they made it today and mm-hmm. they made several things and that by far was the leader, which I thought was interesting because I didn't realize a lot of people even knew what chia seeds were. Yeah, yeah. So it just shows that people are looking for new uh, creative ways mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. make um, foods. So that one I love a lot too. My fennel and, um, and pea soup is one of my favorite, mm-hmm. like, Especially in this weather. Vibrant, yeah. It's, it's thick, but it's light. It's got a um, little sweetness from the fennel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and it's uh, it's super satisfying, um, and then you know, I love pasta. I like my my lemon spaghetti is always mm-hmm. a fave go to mm-hmm. because it's so easy. Lemon zest, lemon juice, olive oil, garlic, mm-hmm. Parmesan cheese. Mm-hmm. Make a little dressing, toss it on the hot pasta. Mm-hmm. That's it. Oh, my God. so there's for me go tos are simple. Mm-hmm. No, they sound totally doable. It's yeah.
Your, your daughter's name is Jade. Jade, of course, and your name is Jada. Jada, which means Jade also in the book. Yes, okay. yes. So Jade is um, the English version of Jada. Jada. So uh, how do you balance this all? Like, I know you're incredibly busy. I mean, you're doing, we were walking on a runway one day. Saturday, you're in Toronto in the freezing cold, you know, hosting an event, you know, for Mount Sinai. It's like, I can't how? say that I do it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. I have a great husband who mm -hmm. helps me a lot and mm -hmm. a great family and two lovely ladies who have been with me since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to, as a woman, I feel like, and a, a working mom, you have to know when to ask for help and be okay with asking for help and realizing right. we can't do everything. Um, and so, you know, we make a lot of sacrifices and mm -hmm. there's a lot of hard days, but you take it one day at a time and... Uh, I'm always thinking about like, okay, is this worth it? Is it, that's what I ask myself each time. Like, is it worth doing this? Is it worth doing this? Is the time away from home okay to do this? And um, you know, my husband and I think we just kind of talk it through each time and make decisions together. Amazing. And that's kind of how it works. But who knows? You know? You're awesome. You try to make it work. Oh, you're amazing. Congratulations. It's such an